It began with dusty cobbles, bright sun, and the sky was clear, but nowhere clearer than at the front of the field, though this week they'd get help, mostly from Atix Quick Step, but also from a strong tailwind that made doing work on the front not so much work. Of course, it also made getting back into the bunch after a split easy too. I mean, have you ever seen a less panicked echelon? A nine rider break nursed a gap between six and seven minutes and things felt almost calm, minus the persistent pack crashes. Nervousness increased as the first serious cobbles at Arenberg approached, but most favorites were well protected, as the Katusha teammates materializing in front of a down-in-the-bunch Alexander Kristoff at 102 kilometers to go will attest. Anyway, Arenberg wasn't that bad. IAM Cycling's Alexis Saramontans made more gaps in the break than the Peloton saw. The high speeds and smooth sectors caused the race to meet up with a train schedule it generally tries to avoid. Crossing a closed gate is illegal, and all of these guys should have been DQ'd, but none were, because I guess the organizer finds it easier to just wait until someone gets TGV'd. Anyway, after a post-train neutralization and regroup 82k out, Sky returned to pacemaking and then demonstrated why teams usually try to keep group near the front by losing Gary Thomas to a curb. Over the next few sectors of cobbles, EQS really began making its presence felt, forcing splits and getting numbers forward before Yves Lampard used a crosswind section at 66k to go to put the field into echelons. Giant Shimano's John Degenkolb was well protected and ended up with an armchair ride in the split of 15 or so. Kristoff and Sky's Brad Wiggins, not so much. But the road turned, the tailwind came back, and in 4k Wiggins caught the main group, and in another 3 it was all back together. Lotto Sudal made a series of attacks starting 55k out, but none of them managed to get clear. At 44k to go on the Mons and Pavel cobbles, EQS's Stain Vandenberg finally managed to get something going, though maybe due to his pursuer's bad luck. FDJ's Johan Ofredo pulled for teammate Arnaud Demar, who later flatted, while Lotto's Lars Bach went flying into the crowd. Wiggins rematerialized to attack at 32k and finally caught Vandenberg, which coaxed Lotto's Jens de Bouchera and EQS's Denek Stebar to bridge across, but the quartet was caught just 4k later because of that pesky tail actually probably because of Katusha and BMC. The latter sent Manuel Kinziato up the road moments later, while a teammate went flying onto the sidewalk, narrowly missing a display of baguettes, which would have been the Frenchest way to crash ever, though this bottle toss through an open window seconds later kinda makes up for it. Astana's Laurens de Vresa joined Kinziato, and while the group didn't let them go, their efforts strong-armed 14 riders clear, once again including Degenkolb. An attack from Lotto and L. Sepp van Marka finally reeled in the break, but he'd flat moments later, providing a ready set of engines to drive yet another regroup as Astana's Borat Bozic and Lotto's Jurgen Rulens went clear. Rulens dropped Bozic and at 17k to go led into the car for de Labra, but in a sector known for carnage, not much happened besides his recapture, and with just 13k left and all the major cobbles behind them, the group was bigger than 20 and still included several members of the original break, not to mention sprint favorite Kristoff. But Lampard and BMC's Greg Van Avermet would break the race open, hitting out through a series of twisting row house lined roads. Giant Alpeson's Bert de Bakker countered, I think less to join and more to soften things up for Degenkolb, who soloed up to and then passed him moments later with 10k to go. 4k of steady chasing later, he joined the lead duo with a 25 second advantage. But the pack wasn't done yet. Astana's Lars Bomb powered clear, forming a chase group of four, and as the other two leaders tried to get all the work they could out of Degenkolb, the gap between the two began to fall. Stebar soloed across at 4.4k, giving EQS the opportunity to attack and sit. But Degenkolb was up to the challenge of closing Lampard down, and the irregular tempo let the bomb group catch on just before the red kite. So a 7-up sprint. Let's note the final straight will be a tailwind as Lampard leads out for Stebar. Degenkolb, the best sprinter here, is third wheel, and basically only concerned about getting boxed in. Thus the looks back over his shoulder and riding kind of wide. Lampard pulls off before the final bend, I think intentionally because Stebar wants to try and sprint from the front, maximizing the ground Degenkolb will need to cover to get by him. But even with Stebar's looks back, Degenkolb is up to speed practically before he can stand. The EQS rider does get the advantage of a pretty nice slipstream though, and just manages to hold off Van Avermet for second. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won. Yeah.